I'm in Isaiah chapter 12, and this is yet another great chapter on the millennium. One of the greatest subjects in the Bible, the second coming and the millennium. You know, the Lord's favorite day is when he comes back to set up his kingdom, to sit on a throne. And you're going to see the phrase, in that day, all the way through the book of Isaiah. This chapter is no exception. And the phrase, in that day, in the context here, is the millennium. You know, one day with the Lord is as a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. It's the millennial reign of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, there's people out there that don't believe in the millennial reign of the Lord Jesus Christ. And obviously, I'm not saying that he just reigns for 1,000 years and then that's it. But it's a 1,000-year reign before there's time no longer and before we go out into eternity where he reigns forever and ever. So, this chapter is going to be about expectations for the millennium. You know, you always got something you want to look forward to. It's always good to have something to look forward to. Maybe you got a vacation, you're looking forward to it. Or maybe this year you don't have anything you're doing or a vacation you're looking forward to. Well, you can look forward to spending forever with the Lord Jesus Christ. You can have all these expectations for the millennium, and it's going to go above and beyond your expectations. But in chapter 12 and verse 1, it says, And in that day thou shalt say, O Lord, I will praise thee. Though thou wast angry with me, thine anger is turned away, and thou comfortest me. Now you, you saw in the previous chapters that the Lord was angry. Uh, you, you know, he's angry with the wicked every day, the Bible says. And like in Isaiah 9, 12, it says, For all this his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. In Isaiah 9, 17, it said, for all this, his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. In Isaiah 9, 21, it says, For all this, his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. <coughs> 10, 4, it says, For all this, his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. So it keeps talking about his anger. <coughs> and then you get in verse 1, and it says, Though thou wast angry with me, thine anger is turned away. And thou comfortest me. So the Lord's anger is, in this context, in the millennium, his anger is turned away, unlike in the tribulation references that you, you just heard. You know, during the tribulation, that's going to happen after the rapture of the church. It's going to be a time of the wrath of the Lord. It's the Lamb that opens the seals in Revelation 6. The Lamb of God himself opens the seals. It's the wrath of God coming down. And he comes back at the second coming in flaming fire, taking vengeance. But then his anger is going to be turned away. And it's going to be a time of comfort. It says, Thine anger is turned away, and thou comfortest me. 2 Corinthians 1.3 He's the God of all comfort. So an expectation for the millennium is you exit tribulations. You exit the uh, nation of Israel will exit the tribulation. You see, the tribulation is actual title is the time of Jacob's trouble. Jacob as in Israel. You know, Jacob got his name changed to Israel. And that future time period is the time of Jacob's trouble. It's the judgment on Israel for, you know, crucifying the Lord Jesus Christ, rejecting him, saying his blood be on us and on our children. And it's a time of tribulation for them. But even, you you know, as a saint, you're going through tribulations now in the millennium. All that stuff is done away at the rapture for us. All those tribulations are done away. We're not going to face the tribulation. And then the millennium is a, Exit of tribulations for everybody. So an expectation for the millennium is anybody that goes in exits tribulations. In that day, his anger is turned away. The world's going to face his wrath for seven years. Then the remnant 
of believing Israel goes in, saints of all ages go in into his comfort, and there will be a time when he won't when we won't face any more trouble. We will be with the God of all comfort. Second Corinthians one three. Thine anger is turned away, and thou comfortest me. He's the God of all comfort. It says in verse 2 of Isaiah 12, Isaiah 12, 2, Behold, God is my salvation. You know, there's none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Now, the Lord said himself, Is there a, a, a God beside me, a Savior beside me? I know not any. You know, what is... Jesus' name mean Jehovah saves. You know, in Isaiah 44, 8, it says, Fear you not, neither be afraid. Have I have not I told thee from that time, and have declared it? Ye are even my witnesses. Is there a God beside me? Yeah, there is no God. I know not any. He's the He's the only Savior. He's the only one. And it says, Behold, God is my salvation. What else are you putting your trust in? And what is he saving someone from, particularly here? Israel's enemies. Israel has so many enemies all throughout history, even today. But the Lord's going to fight for them. God is their salvation. It says, Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. You know, it talks about some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. Uh, you know, you trust in the Lord. Don't lean to your own understanding and all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will direct your paths. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust. So you exit tribulation, and another expectation is you X out enemies. You don't worry about them anymore. God is your salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. He's become their salvation because he is their one delivering them from their enemies. He is their song. Like in Exodus 15, after they got away from Pharaoh, got through the Red Sea, they sang the song of Moses. It was a song of victory. He's de he defeated Israel's enemies. The Lord did. So behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. You know, what's the problem with a lot of people today? They got the spirit of fear. They're afraid of all these enemies round about them. The second Timothy 1 7 says, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Don't be so afraid of these enemies. The fear of man bringeth a snare. You know, over there in Peter, he talks about 1 Peter 3.14, But and if you suffer for righteousness' sake, happy are ye, and be not afraid of their terror, neither be troubled. What does he tell Ezekiel? Be not afraid of their faces. Why be so afraid all the time? You got all this stuff coming at you wanting you to be afraid of anything and everything. And I talk to people and they're so afraid of everything that they're seeing on the social media stuff, on the news. But this says, Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength. Now, if you had to go through it on your own strength, if it was about your own muscle, if it was about your own uh, courage, if it was about your own uh, means of victory, then you should be afraid. But this is not about you. The same God who delivered you from darkness and brought you into light is going to bring you the rest of the way. He is our strength. The Lord Jehovah is my strength. Romans 5, 6 for when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. So he's your strength. The strongest man in the world couldn't lift sin off of his own back. The Lord had to do it. I mean, you you picture yourself, you're 
you're bench pressing a whole bunch of weight and you think that you can lift it and then it's you just drop it on your neck and you can't get it off of you and then the Lord comes and just picks it right up. He is your strength. The Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He is become my salvation. None other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. And he X's out your enemies. Maybe you got enemies right now just at your workplace. You just keep going. Eventually, it's going to be X'd out enemies. And you go into the millennium, you're not going to have any. So that's an expectation for the millennium. God is my salvation from enemies. He will fight for Jerusalem at the end of the tribulation and set up his kingdom. No need to be afraid. You're not fighting enemies in your own strength anyway. And there is a song of victory, just like Exodus 15 with Moses. And Jehovah, he is your strength. You think about the Lord Jesus Christ. What does his name mean? Jesus means Jehovah saves. So the spirit of fear in the millennium, no spirit of fear. You're not going to be afraid. You're not going to be afraid of asteroids, nuclear war, any of that stuff. Spirit of fear is going to be gone in the millennium. All right, now, Isaiah 12, 3. Therefore, with joy shall you draw water out of the wells of salvation. With joy shall you draw water out of the wells of salvation. Okay, so... Expectation for the millennium number three, experience overflowing joy. You exit tribulations, exiled enemies, experience overflowing joy. The only true joy comes from the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, through this life, uh, lost people experience temporary fake joy. You know, the pleasures of sin, the pleasures of it. There is some pleasure in sin but it only lasts for a season. The pleasures of sin last for a season, but in the millennium, you're going to experience overflowing joy. And if you get saved and live for the Lord right now, you're already going to experience overflowing joy. But then in the millennium, at the rapture, you're going to get a new body. You're going to go up there at the judgment seat of Christ. You're going to come down, and in the millennium, you're going to experience overflowing joy. Therefore, with joy... Shall you draw water out of the wells of salvation? So experience overflowing joy. You'll draw water. Water, spiritual and literal water here. Because Jesus Christ will be visible and he is the source of living water. Let's look at some verses to go along with it. In John 4, starting in verse 1. John 4, 1. When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus himself baptized not but his disciples, he left Judea and departed into Galilee, and he must needs go through Samaria. Then cometh he to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus therefore being wearied with his journey, set thus on the well. So he's sitting on a well. And it was about the sixth hour. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus saith unto her, Give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away into the city to buy meat. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, askest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Samaritans. Jesus answered and said unto her, if thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest ask of him, and, and he would have given thee living water. The woman saith unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well, and drank thereof himself, and his children, and his cattle? Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. 
But whoso drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. The woman saith unto him, Sir, give me this water that thirst not, neither come hither to draw. That I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. Jesus saith unto her, Go, call thy husband, and come hither. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband. For thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou now hast is not thy husband. In that saidest thou truly. But you see, he tells her, he's that living water. And whosoever drinketh of this water that he gives, shall never thirst again. He said, But whosoever, and John 4, 14, But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. See, when you get saved, it, they say it's easy as taking a drink of water. Jesus Christ is the source of living water. And from him you experience overflowing joy. With joy, you'll draw water out of the wells of salvation. Look at John 7, 37. It says, in John 7, 37 through 39, In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water you believe on the lord jesus christ out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water you'll experience overflowing joy john 6 35 in john 6 35 it says and jesus said unto them i am the bread of life he that cometh to me shall never hunger and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. He is the living water. You'll never thirst again. Jeremiah 2, 13. In Jeremiah 2 and verse 13. For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and hewed them out cisterns, broken cisterns, that can hold no water. So Jesus is the fountain of living waters. You come to him to experience overflowing joy, to experience salvation. And that's, so that's spiritual water, but there's also going to be literal water. Expectation for the millennium, you're not going to have to worry about famine. You're not going to have to worry about going thirsty. And all throughout eternity, you... When it gets out into eternity, you're going to see water around the Lord's throne. Like in Revelation 22.1. In Revelation 22.1 it says, And he, show, he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. Revelation 22.17. And the Spirit and the bride say, Come, let him that heareth say, Come. And let him that is athirst, and whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. So, spiritual water, the Lord Jesus is the source of living water, spiritual water, and literal water. The joy will be overflowing, springing up. In John 16, 22, it says, And ye now therefore have sorrow. But I will see you again, and your heart shall rejoice, and your joy no man taketh from you. You're going to have so much joy, expectation for the millennium, exit tribulations, ex out enemies, experience overflowing joy, and the next thing, the exalted name of Jesus. That's an expectation. Do you ever get just so tired of people uh, making fun of Jesus on the TV shows, the movies? Everywhere you look, nobody's giving 
their respect to the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, in that day, as it says in Isaiah 12, 4, and in that day shall you say, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Uh, no more of this praising man. No more of these award shows, the Grammys, the Emmys, the MTV Awards, BET Awards. No more of that. In that day shall ye say, praise the Lord. Call upon his name. Declare his doings among the people. Uh, we're done hearing about these athletes and all their doings. Let's declare the Lord's doings among the people. Talk about all the great things he's done. And you can do that now because he's gave you 66 books telling you all the things that he's done. That, that And it, you can look up and the heavens declare the glory of God. The firmament showeth his handiwork. Declare his doings among the people. Make mention that his name is exalted. So exalt his name. Exalt the name of the Savior. In Philippians 2, 9 through 11, let's look at those verses. Philippians 2, 9 through 11. Wherefore God, hath, God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. You know, over there in Hebrews, the Father says to the Son, Thy throne, O God, it's forever and ever. If the Father calls Jesus Christ God and exalts him, shouldn't you believe Jesus Christ is God and exalt him and put his name above every name and declare his doings among the people? That's what's going to happen. They're going to exalt the name of Jesus, get rid of the idols, get rid of the famous athletes, put up on a pedestal the celebrities, the award shows, and we're going to exalt the name of the Lord Jesus. The phrase, praise the Lord, uh, shows that in this verse and in this context of this chapter, we are in the millennium part of the in that day. And Israel will praise him and they're going to declare his greatness and he will cut off the names of the idols look at zechariah 13 go to zechariah chapter 13 and verse 2 it says and it shall come to pass in that day there's your phrase saith the Lord of hosts, that I will cut off the names of the idols out of the land, and they shall no more be remembered. And also I will cause the prophets and the unclean spirit to pass out of the land. So expectation for the millennium, false prophets gone, unclean spirits gone, names of the idols gone. I'm done hearing about Taylor Swift. I'm so sick of hearing about Taylor Swift. I'm so sick of hearing about all of these idols that people have. And they just love them to death. Act like they're the greatest thing in the world. And these people have no use for God. If they don't have no use for the Lord Jesus Christ, I have no use for them. And I'm, I'm done hearing about how great they are. Let's hear about how great the Lord Jesus Christ is. And that's what it's going to be. An expectation for the millennium. It's going to be the exalted name of Jesus. He's going to cut off the names of the idols out of the land. And... Israel's going to praise him. They're going to declare his doings. We're going to praise him. We're going to declare his doings. And in Isaiah 12, 5, Sing unto the Lord, for he hath done excellent things. This is known in all the earth. Expectation for the millennium, excellent things. These will be known. These things will be known in all the earth. Just like back there in Isaiah 11, 9. Let me show you that again. Isaiah 11, 9. Nine. It says, They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. 
You see that? As the waters cover the sea, these excellent things are going to be known in all the earth. Everybody's going to know about them. Even without social media, they're going to know about it. That's amazing. Everyone will know of the excellent things that he's done because everybody's going around, just like the ver previous verse said, declaring his doings. And the, the ne last thing you're going to have that I'm going to tell you about, Emmanuel in the midst. Emmanuel means God with us. Isaiah 12, 6, Cry out and shout, thou inhabitant of Zion, for great is the Holy One of Israel in the midst. Who's that? The Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy One of Israel. What does it call him in Acts 3.14? It says, But ye denied the Holy One and the just, and desired a murderer to be granted unto you. They, they denied the Holy One, the Lord Jesus Christ, desired Barabbas instead, and they killed the Prince of Life, who got, whom God raised from the dead, whereof we are witnesses. Jesus Christ is the Holy One. Uh, they said he should be called Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. And that's who's going to be in the midst. An expectation for the millennium. You're going to have a room with a view. You're going to look out the window. And you're going to see the face of God manifested in the flesh. 1 Timothy 3.16. Ruling from Jerusalem. Ezekiel. 48:35 Ezekiel 48:35 It was round about 18,000 measures and the name of the city from that day shall be the Lord is there That's that's how it's going to be expectations for the millennium you exit tribulation exiled enemies experience overflowing joy the exalted name of Jesus is going to be there. Excellent things that he does. And Emmanuel in the midst. God with us.